regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. This nation witnessed in Las Vegas last night and early this morning was not a well-regulated militia. And it's about time those in our Congress and in our state legislatures do something about these kinds of tragedies. They come and they come and they keep coming, and yet we do not see any action. No one's talking about the rights of law-abiding citizens, but it's very clear that the refusal to keep the right to bear arms within the confines of the Second Amendment is threatening the First Amendment. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or the press or right of the people peacefully to assemble. It is now clear whether we're talking in a classroom, at a concert, or simply walking the streets, that people in this country no longer have the right peaceably to assemble. Laws that allow what took place in Las Vegas last night, what took place in Sandy Hook, are laws that have been enacted that do not respect the rights of Americans, anyone in this nation, to peacefully assemble. I can't recall how many times I've had to address our community during tragedies like this in other parts of the country and express our profound grief at the loss of life, the tragedy that has struck all of these people and their families and friends. But it's going to continue until the people who are elected show the will to do the right thing. Now, when we originally planned uh, this press conference for today, it was to address, it was to address the problems facing Puerto Rico. And clearly, we need better presidential leadership. Clearly, something must be done in Washington where we help solve the problem, getting relief supplies and the materials to rebuild the island without blaming the victims. Too often, as things go wrong in this country, Donald Trump has decided to blame the victims rather than take responsibility for doing the right thing. But what characterizes both the tragedy in Las Vegas and the tragedy in Puerto Rico is the fact that trauma has been inflicted upon tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people. And one of the functions of government, one of the functions of government is to provide for the health and safety of the people we serve. And so long as this type of trauma, whether it's natural or it's created by people, goes unattended, we are not doing our job. I know that there's people like the Koch brothers who believe that the only function of government is to 
keep government out of the face of business. But since the founding of this country, there's been another function of government, and that is to look out for the welfare, the health, and safety of the people within our boundaries. And we see too often in recent times, whether it's responding to a hurricane, to a tornado, to a natural disaster, or the kind of disaster we saw in Las Vegas, the lack of a proper response to provide comfort and aid to those we serve. This is a question about correcting the course. We've got to correct the course of this nation and of our state in dealing with these problems. I'd like to believe that here in Madison, if anything of this sort should happen, that we have the capability to respond immediately, as we did four years ago, the last time we were confronted with a tornado. So my message today to the people of our community, my message today to the people of our community is that your city is prepared to respond and we wish that we had partners in the state and the federal government that were prepared to respond, to limit the trauma, and to treat people who are the victims of these tragedies with dignity and respect. Questions? So we were just at uh, the county exec's press conference, and he expressed his frustration at the state, particularly he pointed out, in this case, the homeless shelter. He said partnering with the city has enabled them <clears throat> to put forth this effort and pointed out that being county is putting more into homeless resources in the entire state. There seems to be a theme here about uh, well, it's, and, uh, doing battle with the it's, it, it, it's interesting that, that the county executive made that observation because when the study was conducted by the city uh, recently about the roles of various level of levels of government in, in dealing with homelessness, our, our neighbor, Minnesota, has a state program with millions and millions of dollars committed. Million. Pardon? 44 million. 44 million. Well, that's a lot more than millions and millions. But Minnesota has a significant commitment statewide to ending homelessness. You know, we, we recently found that here in Madison, uh, we virtually eliminated chronic homeless, uh, homelessness, uh, chronic homelessness among veterans. There's still veterans who are homeless. There are still other people uh, who are, are chronically homeless. But at least in terms of chronic homelessness among veterans, we've done something about it. Virtually no assistance from the state. Our partners were the VA, the county, and so many of the nonprofit agencies uh, you know, and it, it's, it's just laughable when you see all these people beating their chests, proclaiming their fondness for those who've served, love of country, and they refuse to step forward to deal not just with the homelessness of veterans, but the health issues of veterans, the impediment to employment, and the trauma that these veterans may have incurred. Those of us who are watching the Ken Burns series on Vietnam have, have, have seen uh, in some small way the impact of that war on both the physical and the mental health of a generation. Well, 
it's about time for some people to step up and put their money where their mouth is. And that can, they can start right now uh, statewide with, with, with veterans. But this lack of attention to trauma, which is so expensive in both dollars and in terms of human dignity and health, must be addressed. We need a course correction. Mayor, I can understand you preparing, talking about homelessness or the veterans, but are you suggesting that if something that happened, like what happened in Las Vegas, happened in Wisconsin, that the state of Wisconsin or Governor Walker would not respond in no. an appropriate manner? No, I'm just saying I'm hoping that others, the other governments, we know that Madison uh, to date has been able to respond in the face of natural disasters, whether it's been devastating snowstorms or tornadoes. But when it comes to issues uh, like Puerto Rico, what's happened in terms of the hurricanes, uh, I'd like to have the knowledge that our state and our federal government are capable of responding. something of that magnitude if, if something happened this legislatively that they wouldn't? I'm very concerned about the inability of the federal government in the light of the last three hurricanes uh, to do the right thing. There's no question about that. Uh, the inability to get to the people of Puerto Rico the necessary assistance is is inexplainable. But what we've got is a president who is blaming the victims, the people of Puerto Rico. I'm not sure if it's the time or the place we're talking about these, you know, national and you know big tragedies. Yeah. But talking about issues with state government, um, you know, I know there have been some talk. Have you made a decision yet if uh, you'll be No, I have not. It's still after Labor Day and we're in the time frame. In the wake of a you know a tragedy like this in Las Vegas, is there anything the city does you know to kind of you know relook at you know laws, talk to the police department, anything you guys do uh, just to try to prevent well, something like this? Well, one of the things our department has done has reviewed all of our large crowd situations, and we're certainly uh, prepared for for any event like that. But I'll be blunt. There's only one person in this whole country who, when out in an open space, is safe from an assault from a high building, and that's the President of the United States. Wherever the President goes, the travel routes are inspected. Every building that has a high access to any place the president may be is reviewed and inspected. When President Obama was here and spoke before this building, every aspect of this building and this side was monitored. And we were told under no uncertain terms, you are to keep the blinds down and don't touch them. Don't even bump into them. The President of the United States is the only person who has that kind of guarantee, that kind of safety. The rest of us are open to what is clearly an unregulated militia, prepared and willing to assault the people of this country. Well, Freak Fest, I mean, you know, you can stand at the top of Meritor Hospital and look into the bowl of Camp Randall. Uh, like I said, from that standpoint, except for the president, no one gets that kind of safety. 
there are other things that can be done. We can prevent that kind of wholesale assault with that kind of firepower going into the hands of a lunatic. And nobody will be affected for deer hunting season. All right, thanks.